this to the computer. Hello, everyone. Uh, we are finally able to get mm -hmm. our electronics working correctly. Yoy, thank you so much for your patience. Thank you for being here. I want to introduce you to everyone that's here and coming in and who will see this on the replay. Thank you for being a part of Purple Runways, Survivors, Thrivers, Conquerors um, series as a, a woman that who roars, so to say. <laughs> thank you. Thank so, you for having me. I'm very excited. Thank you. So I wanted to talk to you about and, and just to for you to introduce yourself and we'll go over a few questions. But before then, for those of you that do not know who I am, my name is Gigi McMillan and I am the founder of Purple Runway. We support survivors, thrivers and conquerors while we stand in the gap for those who are still in the struggle. Um, you can reach us and learn more about our programs and everything at purplerunway.org. Uh, we are here, we are a sisterhood, and Yoy is a part of our sisterhood. So I'm going to let this time to let Yoy take this time to introduce herself and tell you what makes her a thriver. Well, first of all, good evening to everybody, and thank you for being here with us. Uh, it means a lot, actually. Uh, my name is Yoy Campo, and I am... Um, a mom, <laughs> a woman, a dancer. Um, I am a very happy soul and um, I have an incredible story that um, I see as a bridge for many. So I'm very happy to be here and uh, to have you guys join us today. Thank you so much, Joy. Well, one, one way that I met you was through our recruitment process for the purple runway and you came to that audition and you just brought your whole authentic self and it was immediate it was an immediate attraction to your to your spirit to your walk and i think it was to your story thereafter so in order to get people to know a little bit more about Yoy, because you're a teacher, you're a dancer. I mean, people love you. Um, why did you decide to, to walk in Purple Runway and how has it helped you share your story? Well, um, I believe that everything um, comes together with uh, the energy that you place out for yourself. So it, it so happened that um, I had seen uh, on the news uh, an interview that Justina had been in. So then um, I got connected with Justina. And then one day I was like, Justina, you know, there should be, you know, runways and, and, and you know, models, you know, modeling your beautiful clothing, you know, What's up with that? And then she's like, you know what, Joey? There is there is something amazing, and it's called Purple Runway. And I'm actually going to be, um, you know, uh, um, putting my dresses on the runway for them. So I was like, wow, that's amazing. And she's like, would you, you know, want to go out and try out? And then I was like, why not? This was like something so touching. It was like meant to be, you know. Mm -hmm. So then. Um, that day, uh, I, I went there. I uh, went for the casting that you had, and I met everybody there. Uh, honest, honestly, I was a little nervous because um, I didn't know anybody. I didn't go with anybody, so this was this was kind of like more for me, you know. Because usually, like when you go with somebody, it's like you know, you go with your friend or something. But this was something that I took upon myself personal, and mm -hmm. I felt that it was needed in me like you know like when you do something good you like you have a little crown or something i was like i i think i i want to go try this out this is something that i want to do for me yeah. and I, I ended up meeting you that day it was an immediate connection as well everybody there was just so i just felt home actually that's beautiful because from what i understand most people did not know your story Yes, everybody that surrounds me <laughs> doesn't know. Nobody, nobody knows. Everybody knows what I am, what they see in me here now, the now. 
but um, behind this cover, it, there's, uh, there's a very incredible story that um, has a lot of pain, but a, a lot of um, survival and strive and so much uh, love that I put into myself that made me who I am today. So uh, I tend not to conversate that with everybody because um, I see it as uh, it has to be released to the one who needs, you know, it, it, it's, it's so valuable. It's like, you, you just got to give it to the one that needs it. The people that need it. Yeah. And you notice one thing that I've noticed about um, being a survivor, whether people know what I do or not, I feel another survivor, whether she tells me she's a survivor or not. Yes. I'm usually pretty much right on point. Yes. Uh, do you do you get that sense that you're drawn to absolutely yes. that that you're saying there's something there about us? Absolutely. I have always said uh, a quote that says that if we women stick together, there would be less um, pain and less um, danger. Mm -hmm. So I do 100% agree with you that we have this x-ray vision that we do know and feel when somebody is going through that or has been through that, or there's just these little sequences that they're there. It's yeah. Come together. Yes. So how many years have you been free from domestic violence at this point? Um, it's been 15 years. 15 years. Yes. And um, what type of uh, violence were you, uh, that you endured? Was it physical violence? Physical, mental. Um, it was more physical. I, I mean, well, no, I can't say which one was more because they both came at the same time. Um, maybe the, the mental, believe it or not, scarred me more. Um, but it was, it was, it was a balance of both. Mm -hmm. But after you walked away, it, you know, identifying your channel for healing, how did, how did you come across that? Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was, that was very, um, <clears throat> very scary. I think that was one of the moments in my life that, um, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to handle everything because I'm, I, you see me, Joey is a very loving person and um, I tend to be very forgiving. And that was uh, something against me in, mm -hmm. um, in this particular case. So <clears throat> because I was very forgiving and loving and everything was okay, I kind of like, um, Put myself underestimated myself my capacities as a woman uh, as a leader uh, just loving myself and um, it, it was it was really hard because you know obviously I loved the person that I was with but I didn't understand or comprehend that love is not being hurt by somebody physically or mentally it's uh, a totally different scenario not that one so it was hard for me to understand that and the reason why was because um, I came from a pattern. It was my mother, then I also have my sisters that were also in domestic violence. So it was, it was surrounding me everywhere. So I kind of saw it like normal, but there was always something inside me that told me it was wrong. And I still remember to this day, the moment, honest to God, that I, that I, I had the strength to, <clears throat> you know, to, to leave. <laughs> I was in the bathroom on my second floor and um, my hair was falling off. Like it was falling off like in chunks, like all this was falling off. I had kind of like a little lapicia there. And then I just started crying and looking at myself in the mirror and just said, um, I have no money. I had $40 in my pocket. I had my kids and I said, it's now or never. And I just packed up all my stuff and I started driving up 95 North, 95 North. I was in Miami at that time. And um, 
I got to Connecticut to where one of my friends, one of my closest friends, she passed away two years ago. She offered uh, for me to, you know, welcomed me in her house, in her home after all of this. And um, <clears throat> that was, it was terrifying. It was terrifying. Nobody can know unless you're going through that. I get, you know, I know I overcame, I overcame it so many years, but I get nervous talking about it still. It's still so, it was so deep and I couldn't sleep, I couldn't eat. Um, it was just this, this depressed mode. And then uh, the most, I think the most scary thing was that um, this person um, like uh, minimized me so much that I almost believed it, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's even, oh my goodness, I got chills. But um, that was even more harsh. And, and I, I guess it's very important for you to be strong and make in making this decision. But it's also important, like what we were talking about in the beginning, that uh, if women stick together, these bridges, like let's say if Eliana, her name was Eliana, if she wouldn't have been there, I would have never had that bridge. That's right. To, to do it, you know? And right. most women don't have that nowadays. They don't have that trust in somebody or, or that strength to do that, to take that step. Mm -hmm. You know, if there's kids involved, if there's, um, if they have no family, lots of um, my Latino uh, community, they're very, they're undocumented. A lot of people coming on, you know, to this country on their own. They have no mother, father, no nothing. That's right. And, and that was something that you were, when we first <laughs> talked, that you were very concerned about. And you really wanted to share how, um, even yeah. if you are undocumented, you still can receive protection under yes. the law here in the United States. Yes, that's and something that everybody should know. It's not only the Latino community that's undocumented. We have lots of other people that are undocumented definitely. all over the world in the United States. And um, there are laws that defend you and protect you, not only because you're a woman, it's just because you're a human being that are undergoing a situation that is not human-like. Mm -hmm. So um, there's T visas. I don't want to go further into that, but there's T visas, U visas that this country um, automatically gives you for uh, cases. You know, they, they take cases and they look them over, they look them through. And um, if your case is eligible for this, um, you can, you know, stay in this country legally and be protected. So there's, there's so many things um, that people don't know of. And these women take so much because of their fear that if they go run to the police and put a charge on this person, they're actually going to get deported or, you know what I mean? It's just, exactly. it becomes this big ball of snow in their mind, which it's actually is not like needs that. needs to be recognized and needs to be shared that yes. with various different communities that may not, they, that are undocumented, yes. that they need support to know that if they're going through that, they are not stuck. Yes. And, um, that is so great because you use your voice in that way for women of various demographics. So yeah, there's not, it's not only Latinos. I, there's a lot of um, Asian countries, uh, uh, Asian um, ethnics that there are going through a lot of domestic violence. And they're the type of people that are raised in that you keep your dirty laundry at home and you don't tell anything to anybody and you have to take it because this is the person you married and you got to handle it. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of people are, are actually trapped up in this mindset that um, keeps them in this abuse. Mm -hmm. And it just, it, it becomes actually, I don't want to say addicting, but it becomes um, your mind kind of like, it starts to think that it's okay. And that's the big problem. Well, that is, that is especially prevalent when you uh, mm -hmm. uh, have grown up around abuse. Yes. As a child. And it's been in your family and it's generation after generation. Yes. And, um, but you, we do know it's wrong. And then it just takes us, the, the people that you have become or I have become, I didn't grow up with abuse. Yes. However, that doesn't mean I wasn't naive to the fact that this happens. So right. that put me in a vulnerable state too. So it's no 
whether you witnessed it or you did I, not witness it. There's it so many doors. Shame, hurt, pain, blame, and you don't know how to, you know, um, you, you really don't know how to, to, um, to really share that hurt and pain right. because there's not, there's not it's a pattern standard or, right. or it's something that you really don't want your family to know about ex exactly. when you're going through. Exactly. And it's scary because of the fact that um, it, it can happen to anyone. And um, like we were saying in the beginning, like, um, nobody knew before Purple Runway that I ever had any type of uh, domestic violence issue or circumstance of any sort because they see me such an energetic person, such a strong leader. Um, especially advocating for my women. Um, so nobody ever thought that I, that I had ever, ever any type of uh, issues of, uh, such as these. So, you know, uh, it's scary to think that it can happen just to anybody because it could be somebody from my origin or somebody like yours mm -hmm. that, you know, maybe you were naive, maybe I wasn't naive, but still we got trapped in that cactus. That's you right. know, it was, it was just, I guess it's, I guess one of the important things is um, the way the the signs, to recognize the signs, the way we see the signs. That's what I want to say. Like um, we have to, like our new generations, we have to keep them alert of these signs. These, there's, they are, they are patterns because although you and I were different, but we, we landed on the same cactus, um, but it's still the same shape of a cactus. Okay. So, um, it's like when we were kids where they say, well, Bobby keeps hitting me, mom. Oh, he's just hitting you because he likes you. He likes you. That big mistake. Oh big my mistake. gosh. I never that that, that to children. You know, really you men. Know, men should <laughs> never touch a child because a lady, because that doesn't mean that they like you. Right. Uh, I don't want to program my children that way. Yeah, we know yeah. better now. I mean, this generation knows better and it's just definitely getting information out to them to let them know about dating violence. Um, yes. Their high school, the, the statistics for high school students uh, yes. that have uh, found themselves in, a, in abusive relationships in high school is, mm -hmm. I don't know the exact number, but the, the totals are up there more than most people would even think. Yes. So um, yes. educating the high school students as well. So I want to talk about um, just like you said, this was something that you saw in your family generation after generation. And um, it, you said that you lost your sister yes, due to domestic violence. Yes. And what it came down to was a premeditated yes. murder. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and the fact that she never reported it, although in the end he was locked up, but it was by the skin of a skin of hope so yes. to say so can you share <laughs> yes. how that you being a survivor and your sister actually losing her life because of it so um my sister uh lived in in jersey and she was she was she's the smallest one uh she was the smallest one out of all of us um and she got she got married to her her high school sweetheart so it was such a pure love because we all knew this kid, you know, he grew up around the way um, in Colombia because we're from Colombian origin. And, um, you know, then, you know, as an American, she came back here. She lived with him. They got married. Um, she would always tell us that everything was fine, that everything was okay. How are you doing? And she would, you know, sometimes she would complain of regular things, but she never communicated to us that she was being uh, abused uh, physically or mentally at all. So, um, on that sense, uh, the whole time of their relations, which was seven years, uh, we never knew at all until, uh, when two months before the, this incident happened, she decided that she wanted to go back to Colombia and start to be a veterinarian and that she was going to leave Pedro. His name was Pedro. So, um, we were like, okay, you know, that's, you know, that's your decision. We support you. Um, whatever it is that you want to do, just please be careful, you know, cause you know, we already had been through there. So we were like, you know, just be careful. Cause you never know, whatever. 
And um, soon enough, this guy, um, well, my sister went to live with my other brother, mm, try to rub it, uh, like uh, run it fast. Um, she went to go live with my other brother and she was staying over my brother's house when um, her, her, her husband, he sneaked up on her one morning after my brother went to school and broke inside the house um and um he he had a uh i i think it was a struggle with her something like that he ended up taking her life in the most uh terrible way um but you know uh faith in our family is is very big so uh i guess uh, god had his hand over the the incident and my brother had forgotten his book and he went back and uh he saw my sister laying on the floor in a puddle of blood and he picked her up took her to the hospital by then it was too late but it wasn't late for him to call the authorities and they caught on to her husband which was already in orlando because he had planned it all to leave the country so they caught him and eventually his trial went and it lasted for about three years till he got uh, 130 years right now in Jersey. And, um, you know, that being said, it was, it was terrible because we never knew. We never knew nothing. Although we weren't naive and brought up naive, but in her case, we just never knew. So it, it, it's actually crazy because you don't know what a person's mind could be thinking. You know, we've thought of everything. We were like, oh my God, maybe she thought that we were all going to get mad at her or, you know, was, I don't know. I just... But it was very terrible. Um, my mom, our, everybody in my family, it was, you know, my mom was devastated. I mean, it was terrible. And, you know, it, it did run in our family because, you know, my grandmother was uh, physically abused, mentally abused. My mother was physically abused, mentally abused. My sister, her life was taken away. I was uh, physically and mentally abused. I have another sister who right now lives in Houston. She was mentally and physically abused as well. Um, so it was a pattern and uh, I, I now at my stage right now, I think about it and I'm like, how can I raise my girls? Cause I have four to be empowered women, you know, um, right. how, what, what did I do wrong? What, where did I, what happened? You know, and I just, I but just think that- is you, are teach, you have taught them after. And yes. you've, you've, yes. you've changed everything around as a teacher, as a leader. Um, yes. And that's what they see and they remember. One thing about our children, if, when we're in relationships that are uh, abusive and they witness that, and when they witness mom or dad or whomever get away from that abuse, it is 10 times more likely they will not abuse or let themselves be abused because they've seen it. It's not, it's not something that is just goes to the, through the family. Right. Right. So right. with you, this is what I understand by talking to you that you never went to formal therapy. Ever, never, never. To heal. My, that wasn't yeah. your healing channel. My healing, my healing vessel channel was church. Um, I was brought up Catholic, like old school Catholic, uh, Catholic. Um, but then when I was, uh, 24 years old, I converted into Christianism. Um, so when a uh, Christianism, um, being not a uh, Catholic Christian, but, uh, being, um, um, uh, like what's that called? Like newborn Christian. Okay. So then when I decided to be newborn Christian, um, I just felt this strong connection and, um, believe it or not, I was going, because this was a Christian person that was doing this to me. So we cannot be deceived in how people are, are or what they show or where they congregate because these people are everywhere, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just, it's, 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 it, you know, I think, um, the ego and the narcissism it just combines into this uh, big monster that it can take over anything that anybody can be so um we would go to church like nothing 
it was like nothing, you know, like, but my time in church was like, oh my God, it was like the only time I was happy. I would, I couldn't wait for Sunday to come because I can talk to people. I can see people because I was practically in a jail cell throughout the week. It was, it was ridiculous. All I saw was my children and I was under a mind control. So, um, I couldn't talk to my children. I couldn't talk to them at nighttime because he wouldn't allow me. So, wow. Yeah, it was, it was psychological. I mean, like I'm telling you, I was, I was treated, I, I used to, you know, uh, say mean things to myself. I would be like, oh my God, you know, it's like, I'm, uh, I'm being treated, you know, worse than a cow, you know, it's like, you mm -hmm. know, stuff like that. And, um, so when, it, when church came, it was like, it was the only thing that made me happy. And, um, I try to, you know, connect with God. And I guess that was my vessel, my first, my, my first strength. And then, um, I had a passion for dance since I was a little girl. So when I was at home and he wasn't around, I would like punk up my worship songs and, and just dance or, you know, um, in, in my way, free myself, you know, that was like, that, my, was your, that my, held you together until yeah. you could literally it gave me sanity for, uh, you know, the, the, the torment that I was in at that moment. Yes. So that moment that, that you were in the, in the bathroom, you went in the bathroom and you looked in the mirror and you said, you have to go. Mm -hmm. What did you take with you? I took my children and $40 and that's it. That's it. Um, I had... It was it was horrible because um, that was uh, the worst beating that he ever gave me. So my face was totally destroyed. Um, I had I have an issue with my left side that I lost um, a couple of teeth, and um, my face was marked and I was bleeding. I had whip marks because he would whip me, and I say this because I want to be I don't want to sugarcoat anybody through this video, I want to let everybody know that it's out there and it does happen. And, um, it was just the worst of it. And I just, I just said, or, or I'm going to die or I'm going to beat this. Mm -hmm. So I looked at myself in the mirror and I said, I made a choice and I said, I'm going to beat it. Yeah. And I grabbed my kids, put them in the car and I, I had $40 in my pocket and I went up to, to New York. I just tanked my car and as actually, you know what, I, I never lived in Baltimore ever, but this is so meaning for me, meaningful for me because, um, the pit stop from Miami to, to New York was Baltimore. And, and my mom at that time, she was in Asia and um, I needed money, so she wired me money so I can get to Connecticut. And it was here in Baltimore. And um, just, it was, it was just, it was it for me. I think I had the choice either where I was gonna live for my kids, for myself, or I was just gonna die in the hands of this monster. Yeah, and you notice, I, I asked uh, a few survivors that particular question, when you decided to leave, what did you take? Because it's important for me, because when I had to, to leave and mm -hmm. safety plan, when during that time, it was no safety planning. Right. You no. Know? <laughs> you think about all of the, the things that we think we value. Those are not the things that we take. Okay. I did, I had, I had a beautiful home. I had, um, you know how the houses are in Miami. They're mm -hmm. huge and big. It was a townhouse. It was beautiful. And um, I left it all. I didn't take, um, I remember the only thing that I grabbed in, in, in my purse was my daughter's diapers and, you know, like just fundamental, fundamental things. Um, uh, I was breastfeeding the smallest one. So I, mm -hmm. I, I remember I was driving up 95 and I had to breastfeed my kid while I was driving because I was- you Figure it out. I, I was, I couldn't stop because if I stopped and mean, it meant that I needed money and I couldn't because I didn't have any. So it was, 
Yeah. I, I didn't care for anything. I left him with everything. Um, yeah, but yeah, it was, it, you're right. It's so incredible that we have so many things that we say we, we treasure and we work so hard for. And then at well, the we end don't want to give up. Yeah, exactly. Yes. But at the end of the day, uh, when push comes to shove, it's meaningless. Meaningless. It's, it's worthless. Yes. I, I took, I had the, my baby's bag, diaper mm -hmm. bag. Yeah. And I put birth certificates and then the important papers under the flap of the bag. Right. So, and was going to the store to get milk. That was my plan. Mm -hmm. But I had already explained to my parents and my safe haven where I was right. going to, to that right. was going on. So right. um, I didn't take anything. I didn't take, I didn't, I left with the clothes on my back, but the important papers that, that I would need to get from one space to the other. And that was right. So I don't recall, valuing, I, may, I might have, I don't recall maybe, um, I think I only had um, Just Lee's um, papers and, mm -hmm. um, and my ID and just personal yeah. stuff in my wallet. But um, it was actually, oh my gosh, it was, it was, I, I tend to, you know, like when I talk about it, like I have like little um, flashbacks because I erased it so much out of my memory that um, <clears throat> I remember Gigi, um, I tried to do it earlier that day. And I had everything planned out and it didn't happen that way. So then um, night came and I had no other choice but to leave the way, like, I, I, like take, to take advantage of the moment versus when I had right. it planned out. Right. So, it, it, you know, it was just like, a, it was just like this uh, a drilling in, you know, it's like, a, mm -hmm. like a, an action movie. You're like, oh my God, he's turned around. Oh my God, this is the moment. Oh my God, grab the kids. Please don't cry. Shh, shh, shh. You mm -hmm. know, come on. Oh my God, it's just, yeah, it's crazy. It's but, really, really you crazy. Know what? You can you can look at back and think about those things and understand it's in your past. Yeah. And you've grown from it. Yes, we still, you know, sometimes people are traumatized by a smell. Yes. Sometimes people are traumatized by certain um, uh, uh, words that someone may say that they've never he hadn't heard that word or that phrase in yes. many, many years. Is yeah. is our the way that we can we we are trauma trauma induced comes back upon us. It's very um, it comes out of the blue. Yes. So just like you said, I'm sitting, I'm watching you, and you're saying, I saw when you were channeling back to that moment. And but the thing is, is that you know that you're safe. Yes, you feel safe. Yes. Your children are safe. Even though it was all of those years ago, you have become a leader. Yes. And so many people listen and learn from you. Yes. And it's a beautiful, beautiful um, story of survival. Because as a teacher and a leader and someone that did not have a lot of money, you found a way. And this is what we women that may not have a whole lot, we have to find a way to own our, our journey. Yes. And you found a way to own your journey. And you found a way to take your passion of a dancer as a little kid and translate that into putting smiles and on other people's faces that want to learn how to salsa or, or learn or to watch you in competitions and win you know, prizes. So I honor you for, for that. I honor you for, you know, making do with what you have with all the determination that you could muster together to make sure that you were whole. Thank you. Yes. It was, wow. I mean, I, I guess I see it all now why I love to teach, um, especially like children 
because it's very fundamental, the things that you deposit in a child's mind. And I think dance is a way to teach you how to be a leader, mm -hmm. how to uh, empower yourself, how to push yourself, how to be strong with yourself. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of like determined, but also disciplined. You know, so um, I have right now a student that her name is Melissa and she's just my baby and I see her and she's so strong minded and um, I am so proud of her and her mom is such an amazing mom. She's, she's like the mom that, you know, supports her everything and it's just so wonderful to see this. Um, and every time I see a little girl that wants to become a dancer or uh, wants to learn from me, I try to deposit all my strength uh, and wisdom in the sense of becoming a leader, mm -hmm. being disciplined, pushing yourself, not only in dance. Sometimes I'm teaching and I'm like, okay, girls, this is not only in dance. Come on, we got to be strong. You know, this is in every area of our fields and in, in everyday lives. So um, mm -hmm. I tend to... Uh, be communicating in that in, in that area and also you know I get close to my students and I have many friends that actually have gone through difficult um, times I've had friends that have um, you know uh, um, shared with me uh, domestical issues and um, how they overcame them mm -hmm. and uh, or they come to me because they see me as a leader and they're like, okay, Joey, what should I do? And I'm like, okay, honey, you know, we got to talk this through. Come on. Uh, I have uh, a couple actually that I've, that I've spoken to and, and gladly it's helped in some way. And that to me is amazing because I get to share and pass on yeah. a little piece of that. Little pieces and more little pieces. Of that. <laughs> so yeah. let me ask you, I have only two more questions and this is one of them is, how do you self-soothe when pouring into other people what do you do for yourself to really refill your own cup in, in like how in, into empowering myself now or yes. uh, um i think uh, i'm the type of person that i i i've learned to learn from my experiences so i think I just tend to grow with everything that happens. And um, I think that one of the things that helps me to keep motivated and to keep going is um, like having a lot of patience and uh, listening, mm -hmm. listening. Sometimes we're too quick and we don't listen. Mm -hmm. And it's important. Um, Sometimes for me, I don't even listen to myself. My kids are like, mommy, did you, did you notice that? I don't know, um, your, your, your shirt's on backwards the <laughs> other day. And I'm like, God, I, I, I didn't notice because I'm running. But uh, listening is important. And not only listening to somebody else, but listen to yourself. There's those, these moments, actually, I just posted a picture in Facebook that uh, I like that quote that said that, um, you know, everything happens for a reason. And once we get back to normality, we're going to miss this, this peace, this, this quiet that we have right now. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's important to take advantage of every moment and learn from them. Yes. And then I, I think that helps us move. So what would you tell, the final question is, what would you tell others who are in the struggle? What would you say to them to give them hope? Wow. I, it's, I have, it's so much, but I'm going to try to resume it. And if you're in struggle and you are going through a domestic violence of any sort of uh, physical, mental, um, whatever you want to call it, but if you find yourself in some sort of abuse, um, you have to look for yourself and your strength and look for a bridge because there are bridges that are there, but we don't see them because we are so blinded for what's in the immediate moment. My mom used to always have this good old saying that um, it's easy to be an expectator than to be 
inside the movie. Mm. So um, it's hard when you're inside the movie, but there are um, resources, there are bridges, there are people there that are willing to lend you a hand and help you through this struggle. Um, you have to be strong enough uh, to beat it on your own um, inside internally. It's, it's, a, it's a battle within you uh, to make the right choice for yourself, especially if you're a mom. Um, you have children that are going to look up to you. So this all combines itself in, in that decision. So I would, I would definitely give an advice uh, for you to grow that inner strength to look for resources and to make the step you can do it you can definitely do it yes and so that is that's wonderful thank you so much joy for sharing your story thank you for being patient <laughs> um thank you for being kind and thank you for uh being there for the young the young kids and adults because they're going to come to you just like you said they did no one knew but you have a lot of one in, one in three women. There's a lot around you and thank you for pouring into them and thank you for pouring into Purple Runway. Um, <laughs> thank love you. For you. Here. Uh, we can't wait to have our I Thrive dance party with you. Yes. Once we get out of jail. Once we get out of jail. <laughs> uh, we cannot wait to, to, do, to have um, a really empowering class with you with our I Thrive sisters and our Purple Runway sisters. Um, so we just want to thank you for taking this time. Thank We're going to um, get this on YouTube and then you can share it with your wider, broader audience because um, of the technical difficulties. But yeah. the thing is, is that we won't stop. We have so much more. Yes. And um, I really appreciate you being here. So thank you. Thank you, Gigi. Thank you, everybody that joined us. Stay safe. And please remember there are, there are many ways to overcome everything. And this is one. Yes. Yes. We're here. Sisterhood is very powerful. And, um, you know, we, we welcome any and everyone that needs support um, overcoming domestic violence. I want to say thank you to Selena and Ray and Earl and Chelsea and Bella for being a part of this. And um, we will look to do more and you'll see a lot more of joy. Thank you. Bye, guys. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. Have a good evening. Bye.